So we're looking at property density functions for continuous random variables. And I'll just remind you, um, the condition for a probability density function um, to exist is that the integral between its two, uh, its upper limit, b, and its last possibility, a, of the function with respect to x will equal 1. Very much like, you know, the, in, in discrete random variables, the sum of all your probabilities equals 1. For continuous data, we use a graph to represent the possibilities, and it's the area under the graph that must come to 1, and we can find areas using integration. Now, suppose I want to find the probability that uh, a particular value of x is between two known values of x, x2 and x1. Well, that will be the area um, represented by the shaded area in the diagram. And so, again, we can use integration to answer our question. So this will equal the integral between x2 and x1 of the function with respect to x. So we can use integration to find the area under a curve to answer probability questions. Now, if we were required to answer a series of probability questions for a particular given function, we would end up integrating our function over and over again. So to avoid doing this, uh, what we do in the first place is produce the commutative distribution function. The definition of the commutative distribution function, we use capital F, is that F of x will tell us the value of the property that x is less than or equal to a particular value of x. And f of x itself is going to equal the integral of the function we're working with. Now this will throw up a constant of integration, but we can um, find a constant, a constant of integration by using the fact that f of the last possible value can't be less than the last possible value, and that will equal zero. So in examples that come later, you'll see me using uh, that fact to find the probability, so to find the constant of int integration. Another um, thing we should be aware of is that f of b being less than the highest possible value, it's not a very good b, less than the highest possible value. Um, get this right in a moment. It's going to equal, zero, um, equal 1. And these are two facts that are particularly useful when we um, have the problem of finding the constant of integration. So if we've worked out um, our f of x and we want to find the probability that x is greater than x5 but less than x6, once we've worked out the current institution function, we simply do f of 6 minus f of 5. Okay, so we'll now do an example. So in this particular problem, we're told that f of x equals x cubed over 6 plus 1, 6. It's our property density function. It exists between 0 and 2. We're asked to find the commutative distribution, capital F of x. The probability that x is less than 1, and the probability that x is between 0 0.5 and 1.5. So we need to start off um, by calculating f of x. So f of x is going to equal the integral of x cubed over 6 plus 1 sixth. So, if we integrate um, x cubed, we get x to the power of 4 over 4. So the 4 go on the bottom, but you've got the 6 as well, so 4 times 6 is 24. And then you've got plus x over 6, plus the constant of integration. Now to find the constant of integration, I'll use the fact that f of naught equals naught. So f of naught will equal naught to the power of 4 over 24, which is 0, plus 0 over 6, which is 0, plus c. So we can see then that c equals 0. So f of x equals x to the power of 4 over 24, plus x to the 6, so x over 6. So to use that to find f of 1, or the probability that x is less than or equal to 1, in fact I'll just make that very clear, so that will equal 1 to the power of 4 over 24. 1 over 24 plus 1 over 6. Now, 1 over 6 is 4 over 24. So 1 over 24 and 4 over 24 will give me an answer of 5 over 24. For the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. Now I'm going to look at the um, problem, the probability that x is greater than 
five and less than 1.5. So we're now going to need to use our calculator, but I'll remind you that will be f of 1.5 minus f of 0.5. So we'll now turn to the calculator and I'll insert um, the calculator display onto the screen, which gives us an answer to three decimal places of 0.302. So hopefully now we can see how we can use a commutative distribution function to um, find out probabilities um, from our probability density function.